sing, fam. Yeah. Yeah.
the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of your trial, where famine, darkness is on. And we are the voices in the desert crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, we come, running, running on the clouds, shining, shining like, like the sun, the sun. Like the trumpet call. Like the trumpet call. So lift your hear no voice, hear a jubilee. Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord, and these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteousness being restored, and these are the days of your trial, a famine, darkness, and sorrow. These are the voices in the desert crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, we come, riding, riding on the clouds, shining, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, at the trumpet call. so lift your voice, hear a jubilee, hear a jubilee, and a sign of Jehovah, there's no God like 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 Jehovah. tonight. I want to welcome all the, the Mount Canaan Knight family and uh, all our friends who have joined us tonight to be a part of this uh, Friday night Bible study. Uh, I'm going to ask our church family to continue to uh, uh, keep in prayer uh, all those who are part of our family who experience bereavement, uh, our deacon Don Hartley and his family in the um, passing of his brother-in-law, uh, one of our former members of our church for many years, the Reverend Daniel Robeson, uh, senior, who will, be, who will uh, have home-going service on this Saturday, February 13 at 12 noon at the Joe March Fume Home. And so we ask that we'll continue to lift them up, their entire family, and also to our sister who passed away on last Thursday, Deborah Payne, uh, we will have her home going service on the 
uh, um, today at uh, 9 a.m. In, in, uh, at the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York. So I ask that we'll continue to pray for uh, her husband, Chaplain William Payne, and, and their kids, and our father, and our, our, our brothers and sisters, uh, and the entire family uh, as we uh, celebrate uh, uh, their home going. Uh, the month of February is uh, Black History Month, and so we here at Mount Canaan, as we observe a Black History Month, um, this week we, we honor and reflect uh, back on the life of uh, the late Dr. James Samuel Young, who has served uh, here at Mount Canaan as the first pastor and served for 61 years. Uh, here as the under shepherd of the Mount Canaan Missionary Baptist Church, a man of great stature, a man who had labeled in civil rights in our community uh, for, for many years in SCLC and have served as, as dean, assistant dean rather, uh, in our first West Florida District Association for over 25 years, as well as an instructor, and as well as in our state and national convention and serve as uh, vice uh, president of our uh, Florida uh, General Conference of our Congress of Christian Education in our state and as well as in our national Congress. Uh, many years I served as an instructor and mighty man of God. Many consider him the dean of preacher. He have taught many pastors have sent on a his stewardship and has also led uh, uh, of the, the uh, minister institution here, uh, seminary, Baptist seminary here at Mount Canaan Baptist Church for many years. And so uh, this week we honor his life. Uh, this is the month of his birthday, February the 9th. And so we are thankful to God for the many lives that he touched uh, uh, throughout uh, the body of Christ, not only uh, in Mount Canaan. And so we honor him, reflect upon his life as part of our Black History Month. Also, the, I want to say happy birthday to all of those who are part of our church family who were born in the month of February. That's the love month. And so to, uh, just want to say happy birthday to all of you and pray that God would bless you uh, uh, in another year. Who do you want to send it to? Uh, tonight, uh, we want to uh, come from the book of Romans, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, uh, as we expound upon the word of God tonight. I want to talk about, uh, I have a reason to rejoice and want to share the reason why we who are Christian, who are born again believers, those who had been, been washed in the blood of the Lamb, uh, uh, there are some benefits uh, that come to us through salvation and through the result of being justified that give us a reason to rejoice. And so it's so important uh, that we know uh, who we are and whom we are and what we have in Christ Jesus that it will empower us uh, to be able to uh, sustain uh, throughout this season, uh, this pandemic that we uh, now experience. And so I want to talk about uh, that uh, from Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 1 through 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory 
in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patient, and patient experience, and experience hope. And hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet pre eventually for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Or if what, when we were enemy, we would reconcile to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now, by whom we have now received the atonement. Paul uh, is writing to the Gentile Christian uh, in the city of Rome, a city that he had not yet visited, but but he write from Corinth, and he write uh, this letter being excited about wanting to visit uh, of the Christian at Rome. Uh, the Bible said, chapter 1, he said, I'm ready to preach the gospel to them who are also uh, that is in Rome. He wanted to preach about the good news of what God had done uh, for us, for them uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, he wanted them to be excited about of this good news, about the gospel. And that's what the gospel is, is good news. And, 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 and God has even commanded us as children of God and Christian to, to share or to preach uh, the good news about him. Uh, the gospel is about Jesus Christ. It's not about us. It's about him and what he has done for us. And when, when you uh, have a good understanding of what God has done uh, for you through Jesus Christ, you will find yourself uh, having a reason to rejoice. You don't have to wait on nobody. You don't have to wait on the musician or the drummer or, or the praise team or the worship leader. But when you think about uh, the goodness of the Lord, uh, one, one person said, my soul looked back and wonder how I made it over you. Began to reflect back on what he done for me uh, uh, when I was on my way to hell. Uh, Jesus done a work. Uh, for me on the cross of Calvary. And that's enough reason for me to rejoice. So, so the message of Roman is that we have been justified by the blood of Jesus. Christ has taken uh, away our punishment. He has set us free to live righteously before God. We have been made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true uh, for anyone who believes, uh, no matter who you are. For every one of us, Romans 3, 23 said, 
had sinned. And we all had come short of the glory of God. But yet God in his grace freely had made us right in his sight. He did this through his son Jesus. When he freed us from the penalty of our sin. So therefore God present Jesus as a sacrifice for our sin. That's enough reason uh, for us to rejoice. We are made right uh, 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 with, when we believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shed it, his blood on the cross. Uh, that's another reason for you and I to rejoice. So Paul here, he tell the Christian in Rome that we have some benefits because of what uh, Roman chapter 3 talk about being justified. Uh, and, and Romans chapter 5 give us the results of our justification. He said to us, number one, we have a reason to rejoice because we have peace with God. Somebody all said hallelujah right there. Verse 1 said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Another translation said, therefore, since we have been justified, that is, acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith, let us grip the fact that we have peace with God and the joy of reconciliation. Listen. Uh, by faith, Paul is saying to you and I tonight that we've been justified. And only God can justify the ungodly by his faith. And that is what we call salvation. It is something that God give us without any merit, without deserving on our part. We can't work for it. You can't pay for it. It's, it's given to us based upon God's grace and based upon God's mercy that we receive it by faith. It means that our sins are forgiven. It means that Christ has redeemed us from our sin and he has sacrificed uh, for our sin and he has become our propitiation for our sin. We have peace with God. Oh, hallelujah. That's enough to rejoice. Psalm 32 and 1 says, Blessed is he who transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's what Jesus done for us. He covered our sin by becoming that sacrifice and the shedding of the blood. Uh, Hebrews said without the remission of sin, uh, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. Look at uh, Psalm 30. Look at ver that same uh, 32, ver uh, Psalm 32, verse 2. He said, bless him is the man unto whom the Lord inputted not the iniquity. Yes. What a, what a reason that you and I can rejoice by the fact of being justified by faith. He says we have peace with God. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus, right there. Uh, 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 he said, I can rejoice. Because God has forgiven me of my sin. Oh, that a son uh, that says uh, uh, he looked beyond my fault and he saw my need. I, I, I can rejoice because, because I've been justified. Uh, uh, didn't deserve it. Uh, I was guilty. Uh, but yet, uh, he justified, he acquitted me. He dropped the charge as if I never committed a sin. And 
gave me peace with God. That means I, I'm, I, I'm now in right standing with God. Even if death shall come tonight, uh, my soul can be satisfied because I have peace with God. And when you have peace with God, then you will have the peace of God. Many are trying to get the peace of God without getting the peace with God. Uh, uh, you got to get the one that bring the peace. And it's God who give us peace. It's God that give us peace. The one who restored our relationship back uh, uh, with the Father. And then he give us peace that passed it. Uh, uh, Philippians 4, 7 says, all understanding. We can declare, uh, even though uh, hardship and trials and suffering may come, I, I can be satisfied in my soul knowing that if, if I should uh, 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 die uh, uh, tonight or, or the next 30 seconds, that, that I have peace with my God. I I've been justified. My sin has been washed away. The guilt and the stain is gone. Uh, uh, no matter what uh, 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 my hater may say in, in, in bringing up my past and talking about what I used to do, uh, Jesus said, the Bible said that my sin has been washed away. The guilt and the stain is gone. And my past washed away. I have peace with God. And I'm here to tell somebody today, you, you, you're not saying you can have peace with God. You can, can, can uh, receive uh, this gift of salvation by confessing. With your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead. He said, Thou shalt be saved by confess, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. I believe your word. That your son died for my sin. Come into my life, save me. And on to that confession, he give you peace. He make you have right standing. With God. Look what Isaiah uh, 53 and 5 said. He said, But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his strife we are healed. Yeah, look at Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 20. He says, and having made peace through the blood of, of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I said, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, uh, we have peace with God. Uh, that means we are no longer an enemy against God because God has dissolved that issue. And we don't have to run from his presence. We don't have to uh, it know him because uh, we may feel of some un unresolved guilt. But we can rejoice because Christ had paid the penalty that we deserve. We don't have to fear punishment. But rather, uh, we can come boldly into God's presence and receive his mercy and ask him uh, for help in the time of need. The, the second reason, the second reason uh, I want to share uh, why we can rejoice uh, it is because we have the grace of God. 
There it is down in verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein, he says, we stand. We are in a position. We have access. God has given us the privilege that we can gain or attain his favor, his grace, because we've been justified. Because we have the peace of God, we can also rejoice because we have the grace of God. The grace of God is his unmerited favor. Uh, we receive God's grace through believing in the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. Grace is God's unmerited favor. So you can rejoice tonight and even in the midst of this pandemic that you can rejoice knowing that I still have favor with God. The grace of God is upon me even though I don't deserve it. He said I can come boldly before the throne of grace. I can attain, he said, mercy. That means receive. I can receive his mercy that is uh, uh, available for me. What is mercy? Mercy is don't give me what I deserve. That's the gift that God give us through salvation. Is it, 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 I can come before God uh, 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 every morning. That's what, let me tell you, said his mercy is new every morning. Every morning I can ask Lord give me his mercy. I messed up yesterday. I messed up last night. Grant us mercy. He said we can rejoice because we know that we can go to God, go to the throne of God. We don't, we don't have to uh, have a priest, a father, a bishop, a pastor uh, to, to go uh, to talk to God for us. We can go to God ourselves because of what he's done for us. That's, that's, that's enough to rejoice and to know that I don't, have even, I don't even have to wait till Sunday morning. I can I can call him up. I can come before his throne right now. Wherever you may be, you can go to God. That's enough to rejoice. Because if you're trying to get help and you got to call somebody, they may answer. They may look at their phone and they look at the ID and see your name. They won't pick it up. But but you but 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 you don't have to worry about that with God because God has given you access. Uh, to come, he said, wherein you can stand. You, you, you're in position to stand uh, in that place to receive the grace of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God, even though you don't deserve it. He said, we have access to God, grace by faith. I want you to look at tonight. I want you to look at tonight. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, verse 7, 8 and 9. Would you look at this? Come. I can rejoice. I've got a reason to rejoice uh, tonight because, because I have the favor of God. Uh, I have access to his favor, access to his grace. Uh, 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 grace is not only, only uh, 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 of, the, of the favor of God, but, but grace is also strength. It's power. Uh, 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 that's what he mean when he said in Hebrews 4 and 16, he said, uh, um, therefore, we can come boldly before the throne of God that we may attain mercy and find grace to help us. You see that? Help us, help us in a time of need. That that's, that's strength. And, and you know, you know what, uh, uh, what God told Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 when he had that thorn in the flesh and asked God three times to move it. And God would reply by saying, my grace is sufficient. Yeah. You can rejoice because knowing whatever you may go through in this life, that, that you can rejoice knowing that I got help. I, 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 I have the access to the grace of God. I have access to his strength. I have access to, to his power. Uh, uh, Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. His grace, that's grace. He said, I, look what he says. Look what it says. Ephesians 2, 
Y'all you know, make me want to preach tonight. Uh, verse 7, he said, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us. I want you to get it. I want you to get it. That in the age to come, I'm saying it again, uh, uh, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. That is, that is save us. In his kindness, he said, toward us, through Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul said, you can rejoice because not only do you have peace with God, but you have the grace of God. You have the favor of God. And, and, and Paul is saying in Ephesians 2, he said, and, and God wants to demonstrate uh, uh, in this age. He wants to demonstrate. He wants to show up. He says, see him riches of his favor for you. His kindness toward you. His goodness toward you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can rejoice because no matter what life may bring uh, to me, I can rejoice knowing that, that God is going to give me the grace. He's going to give me the strength. He's going to give me the power. He's going to give me the favor upon my life, upon my, my children, upon uh, my family. Are you hearing me tonight? He said, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that's not a yourself. It is give God. You don't have to work for you. You don't have to put up a front to try to impress God. He said, it's a gift that comes from me when you connect yourself with me through salvation. Not only will I give you peace, he said, I'm going to give you the favor of God. The grace of God. Well, he says uh, it is a gift to us out of God's love, verse 8 said, and, and it is a gift, not a word. He said, lest any man shall boast. Oh, hallelujah. Now I can remedy over hearing and seeing uh, uh, the, the old saints of the church when they get happy and when they would get excited about singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found with blind, but now I see through many dangers, toil and snare. I have already come toward grace that brought me safe this far, uh, and that same grace will lead me on down. Understand uh, 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 why they would get all excited and rejoice just over that hymn because because they understood uh, uh, the results of being born again. They un understood the result of justification of their salvation. So we have peace for our past. We have grace for our present. He said we have access into this grace. Wherein we stand. Hallelujah, somebody. So I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know that I have peace with God. And I have grace, the grace of God. I have the favor of God. God bless you tonight. I pray that you would be blessed. I pray that you would. Uh, just ruminate over the word of God in Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 11 uh, in your own personal devotion time that you may get a full understanding of what God has really done for us, for you, through his son, Jesus Christ. And then you realize how powerful the cross is really all about. And the sacrifice that Jesus made hanging on that cross. Dying for you and me 
should have been you, should have been me. But he went in our place to bring us back to God the Father. He brought about reconciling us back to God. That same Ephesians chapter 2 say he raised us up to sit with Christ with God in heavenly places. So he put us back in our rightful place that we can have peace with God, that we can have the favor of God. God bless you tonight. I pray that you've been blessed, uh, continuing uh, to be safe and continue to wear our masks. God bless you. God keep you. Here's our prayer.